Welcome to lecture number 35 of our system protection course. In the last class, that is a lecture number 34, we discussed about the basic principles of circuit breaker. And also we have discussed the evolution of circuit breaker, how uh, the circuit breakers evolved from a knife type of structure. We call it knife switch to the vacuum circuit breaker in fact so it is gradual evolution took place and uh, how we achieved the vacuum circuit breaker then we talked about the behavior of uh, air gas and vacuum gas means different types of gas is considered and its uh, di dielectric strength has been considered and based on that it is found that sf6 gas is the most suitable and uh, under high voltage condition all the behaviors of air gas vacuum were analyzed and then we discussed the uh, switch isolator and circuit breaker these three elements in fact all of the elements plays important role in power system but out of this the most important item is the circuit breaker because circuit breaker operates almost all the uh, time whether it is under no load condition load condition or during fault condition right so in this lecture we'll talk about uh, the process of breaking and the effect of power factor on recovery voltage because this power factor plays very important role in fact when we are breaking the circuit and then we'll talk about the circuit breaker ratings there are different types of ratings involved in the circuit breaker uh, because it is very very essential when we are designing a protection scheme then we'll talk about the restriking voltage and recovery voltage and we'll also see how the restriking voltage we can uh, derive mathematically uh, using the circuit equation Okay, so we'll talk about this let us start with in the lecture 35 uh, so this is the table we discussed in the last class in fact the various functions of different elements switching elements right here we can see here uh, we have considered isolator earthing switch then the switch general switch load switch and contactor circuit breaker and we have seen that circuit breaker in fact uh, it needs to operate under all conditions whether it is under no load condition whether it is under short circuit condition load condition right for both opening and closing circuit breaker is the first element which needs to be operated before the contact before the isolator and other switches to be operated right already we discussed all these things so let us talk about today uh, the process of uh, breaking current okay breaking a current how we process it so we know that under open condition when the circuit breaker is open we have in fact three states of circuit breaker here it is mentioned you can see one is open state one is closed state right and other one is your transition state from open to close this is your transition state and another transition state is from close to open right so uh, when the circuit breaker is in open state or in closed state then under these two states in fact one of the parameter is zero right under open state the current is zero the voltage will achieve across the contact is full voltage right but in case of closed state the full current is flowing through the circuit breaker and the voltage is in fact zero almost zero right and if we we'll calculate the power involved during that time power obviously is the integration of vi dt so uh, this is in fact energy right we can say energy associated right so this will obviously zero because one of the parameter is zero out of voltage and current under these two states so therefore the power will also become zero 
right but however under the transition state we call it transient period under the transition state when it is the circuit breaker is from open moving from open state to closed state the power will not become zero right the energy state will be not zero it is integration of vi dt this is in fact energy right okay so therefore it will be not zero right this is how the uh, breaking happens the important state is your transition state from open to close or close to open where a lot of energy is involved in it and because of this the restriking voltage phenomena happens we'll talk about in detail about what is restriking voltage and how in fact the circuit breaker achieves the recovery voltage we'll see it so this is the process how the circuit breaker operates in fact so we can see here as soon as the fault takes place circuit the ct and pt they give signal to the relay and when the relay actuates it sends signal to the trip coil to energize the trip coil and hence the trip coil uh, becomes energized and the contacts of the circuit breaker start separating okay so as soon as the contacts of the circuit breaker becomes separating it is separating during that moment it is called the transition state at that point the arc struck okay so the arc struck because of the you know the the, the parameters of the network transmission network rlc network it is all storage element storage elements energy storage elements right so when we are opening a circuit lot of energy is associated with it therefore the arc is struck and when the we must have some arc quenching medium in order to extinguish the arc and when the arc quenching quenching is going on at that time the current waveform achieves the natural current zero right so that under that condition only the current becomes zero because during arcing the current never becomes zero the current is current value is existing right so that is we call the natural current zero right when we see the current waveform this is your current waveform right so we call these points as natural uh, zero points okay where the current waveform uh, crosses the x axis that is the natural current zero and at that point only the current becomes zero in the in the arc during the transition period and when this natural current zero occurs if it is s then arc gets naturally extinguished then at that point the arc automatically it extinguished right if it is no then again the arc struck and again this process go goes on and after the arc gets extinguished the transient restriking voltage appears across the contacts of the circuit breaker okay and that is called the restriking voltage and therefore because of this restriking voltage again the arc restrikes so as again the high voltage appears across the contacts when the current is extinguished at that point because of the transient voltage that is also high value in nature so therefore the arc restrikes again we call it restriking of arc or because of the restriking voltage right so the arc restrikes if it is s then again we go through this phenomena this phenomenon again the current goes through the natural zero it again the arc extinguishes if the arc doesn't restrike if it is no then obviously the interruption is successful if the restriking voltage is very small value and the arc doesn't restrike then the interruption is successful and the circuit breaker successfully opened the circuit then your flow is stopped okay so this is how this is a flow of uh, a circuit breaker operation how the circuit breaker operates in fact from the beginning uh, from the from the initiation of fault to finally when the circuit breaker trips right now you can see here different instances how the circuit breaker in fact operates right 
we can see the point one where in fact the fault initiated or the 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 trip coil is energized right here you can see point one is the trip coil energized here the trip coil is energized right and point two is the contact start separating so it will take as soon as the trip coil is energized immediately at, at the same instant the contacts cannot separate because these are all mechanical devices and there must be some time lagging because it takes time to operate right so therefore the the contacts of the circuit breaker start separating after few millisecond right it is the instant two where the contacts start separating right and when it is start separating obviously this is uh, this is your current through the circuit breaker and this is the voltage through the circuit breaker right so as soon as it start separating the current obviously is not zero at that point so therefore what happens the voltage here the voltage restrikes okay so uh, so I'm sorry when the, it start separating obviously after a few millisecond again the current reaches the natural zero zero point right so the first natural current zero where the arc gets extinguished right here this is the natural uh, zero crossing point where the current becomes zero and as soon as the current becomes zero the arc restrikes right? you can see here at this point the arc restrikes because of the restriking voltage across the cb contacts this is your restriking voltage transient rate and if it is magnified we can see this is your magnified view at the instant 3 okay and hence it will continue after the restriking of the voltage the arc will restrike and hence it will continue the current will also continue because of the arcing right again the current will reach the second natural zero current at instant 4 we can see here instant 4 is your second natural current zero where the arc again gets extinguished where again it gets extinguished where again the restriking voltage transient phenomena happens and you can see here this is your magnified view right and and again because of the restriking voltage the arc may again restrike so therefore the current will again continue because of the arcing right so again also in the in instant 5 we can see here instant 5 where the third natural current zero happens where the arc gets extinguished again and it doesn't restrike it may or may not restrike it depends upon the arcing uh, arc quenching medium and others so when so again the restriking voltage will appear across the contacts and because of the because of the again and again it happens because of this the arcing phenomena becomes get gets weak right so therefore gradually it it reduces and it extinguished so it around one or two zero crossing two or three zero crossing it becomes extinguished okay this is how it happens now now we'll see how uh, what is the effect of power factor on the recovery voltage how the power factor in fact affects the restriking voltage and hence the recovery voltage recovery voltage in fact is the voltage which is appearing across the contact of the circuit breaker after the extinction of the arc completely that means when the current is completely zero when the circuit breaker is opened completely under that condition we say that that is the recovery voltage across the contacts of the circuit breaker and restriking voltage is that voltage which appears this is in fact the transient voltage it appears just after the breaking of the circuit okay so that is the restriking voltage phenomena so so if what we'll see the effect of power what happens if you let us consider a unity power factor condition where we say the phi the power factor angle is zero right and the voltage and current they are in the same phase this is your circuit right a source and the load is connected through a circuit breaker now the the load let us say it is purely res resistive unity power factor hence the voltage and current through the circuit will be in phase 
and hence when the the instant where this is your zero crossing instant zero crossing point of the current rate where in fact the arc extinguishes and at this point the voltage in fact becomes zero and hence what happens the restriking voltage will be very less it will be not ab absolutely in fact it becomes zero right? there is no no restriking voltage there is no chance of restriking of the voltage hence if it is a resistive circuit purely resistive circuit when the voltage and current is in phase in fact in the first zero crossing point itself the circuit breaker becomes completely open with uh, with zero restriking voltage or arc zero rest, zero arc restriking right okay so whereas if we'll con because it, in practice it is impossible to get this kind of circuit where we are having the unity power factor it is not possible at all so let us consider a circuit where we are considering a load where uh, the the power factor is lagging it is let us say maybe 0.8 or 0.9 lagging power factor then what happens under that condition obviously if we'll choose the where your, your current is lagging here so you obviously the arc extinction happens at the zero crossing point where the current crosses zero point right so at this point so then at that point your voltage is not zero your voltage whatever is appearing it is minus vm sin phi right here so this voltage of some magnitude and in fact this causes this creates in fact the restriking voltage across the contacts and it causes the arc restriking again and again so how it happens we'll see mathematically in detail in the in the next slides okay so we'll see how it is happening similarly if we'll see a transformer under no load condition where the transformer is under no load condition and it is connected to a source with the circuit breaker and we know under no load condition the transformer only will draw the magnetizing current and which is nothing we say that it is the lagging condition the, the power factor is lagging by 90 degree right so the, the the phase angle is lagging by 90 degree hence the power factor is 90 degree lag and we can say here power factor is we can say it is uh, zero and the power phase angle is 90 degree lag so here we can see the uh, voltage and current waveform of, under this condition so when the current is rushing zero point under that condition your voltage is the maximum right this is your vm point maximum voltage and because the zero crossing points are really it is very important for arc extinction in the in the circuit breaker and when the arc is extinguished the current is becoming zero at that time the voltage is becoming maximum across the circuit breaker contact hence it it in fact gives a very high transient voltage and hence it hence the arc again restrikes right so that is how this phenomena if this voltage is very large very the maximum value then the arc restrikes again and again right so therefore under this condition it is difficult to extinguish the arc uh, the arc quenching phenomena takes a lot of time right so this is the condition where the transformer is open and it is only drawing the magnetizing current now we'll see a condition where there is a the the current is leading the voltage by 90 degree that means we say that the transmission line is open that means we know the ferrant effect because of the charging capacitance obviously sometime the current becomes the leading uh, leading voltage right so it is say it is said here that because of this ferrant effect now it is becoming 90 degree leading the current is leading by 90 degree to the voltage under this condition also your voltage is maximum at the zero crossing of the current right and hence the restriking phenomena will be severe and it will in fact cause again and again the restriking of arc so this is also another case another condition where the 
arc quenching becomes difficult in the circuit breaker. This is another condition where the fault is happened and here also we can see the current magnitude is very high. It is more than the voltage, right? So the current magnitude high and fault when the fault happens near to the circuit breaker, in fact, what happens? Your current is almost lagging by 90 degree to the voltage. So this is another case, right? Here also, in fact, the arc quenching becomes difficult because the voltage, even if it is low value, but it causes the transient restriking voltage across the circuit breaker contacts. So we'll see the mathematical derivation of this in the next slides. So let us uh, discuss a little bit about the circuit breaker ratings because these are very important when we are designing the protections, uh, protection schemes. We need to install the circuit breaker and appropriate rating of the circuit breaker plays a very important role. So there are different ratings. The first rating is rated voltage. The rated maximum voltage of the circuit breaker is the highest RMS phase to phase voltage for which the circuit breaker is designed. This is the rated voltage of the circuit breaker, right? This is nothing but the highest RMS phase to phase voltage for which the circuit breaker is designed. Right. And this is the upper limit for operation. Then rated continuous current. The rated continuous current of the circuit breaker is established limit of the current in RMS ampere at rated power frequency that itself be required to carry continuously without exceeding specified temperature limit. This is the current. We can say this is the maximum load current which the circuit breaker can beer can okay so that is what this is the rated continuous current that means it can carry this current continuously without heating up the contacts of the circuit breaker then comes the rated mba it is the product of the pre fault circuit breaker voltage okay so the voltage is pre fault and the post fault circuit breaker current post fault circuit breaker current is the faulted current right so therefore, the MBA is expressed on the three phase basis as 3 into V pre fault into I post fault. So this is the formula for circuit breaker MBA. So V pre fault is the phase voltage under pre fault condition and your I post fault condition is obviously the phase current and it is during fault condition. Okay. And another kind of rating is your making capacity. So making capacity is specified as specified in terms of peak value of the first current wave. Okay, so peak value of the first current wave that flows immediately up to the circuit breaker contacts close to an existing fault. Suppose some disturbance or fault is happening in the network. So immediately we don't uh, keep open the circuit breaker. Of, of course the re-switching or the re-closure of re-closure phenomena is important for power system because as soon as some fault happens the circuit breaker is it trips and again it re-closed for few seconds because it's because sometimes the faults are temporary and because of that and the circuit breaker might have tripped and when the temporary fault is removed again we can re-close the circuit breaker very quickly so therefore, the reclosure uh, phenomena is takes place. It is very important in the power system, right? So, when reclosing the circuit breaker, in fact, this making capacity plays very important role. Making capacity is specified in terms of the peak value of the first current wave form when the circuit breaker contacts are closed under an existing fault condition. Okay, this is the making capacity. We can see here the figure uh, where the transmission line is given and the fault is happening and the circuit breaker is suddenly tripped and again it recloses. When it recloses, so what happens to the, uh, the current waveform? The current waveform, the first peak of the current waveform in fact gives the rated value of the making capacity, right? So here we can see this I fault current 
will have this kind of nature vm obviously if we'll derive the fault current from this figure we will find this expression vm by r square plus omega square l square square root sine of omega t plus alpha minus phi alpha is the controls the switching angle this is the switching angle minus vm by r square omega square l square square root sine of alpha minus phi e to the power minus t by tau so this is the decaying component by which the current transient is decaying right okay, this is how uh, this this is the so the peak value of this will be your in fact this is the peak value so this will give us the making capacity of the circuit breaker okay so obviously we know that this is the transient how the transient current looks when the fault happens this is the fault current right with a dc offset we have seen this is your equation when this equation is plotted we'll get this kind of waveform of the fault current now another kind of rating is your braking capacity the rated short circuit braking current of a circuit breaker is the maximum short circuit current that the circuit breaker is capable of braking under specified conditions of transient recovery voltage and power frequency recovery voltage so this is the maximum short circuit current maximum fault current that the circuit breaker is capable of breaking so this is called the breaking capacity of the circuit breaker now you can see here uh, the breaking capacity right here this is one of the fault current is given here right so this is the instant of contact separation where the contact when the suppose so the fault initiated is here and here we have this is the instant where the fault where the contact of the circuit breaker is, is separating right so then from this figure this part of the figure we can decide the braking capacity right so we can write that the symmetrical braking capacity will be bc by root 2 so bc is your maximum value here of the waveform because this is your dc offset now bc will be the maximum value so therefore your rms value of the current will be bc by root 2 so this will give me the symmetrical braking capacity now if i'll find the asymmetrical braking capacity this is nothing but the peak value of the uh, current and that is nothing but bc by root 2 square plus ab square square root so this includes all from the x axis to the peak value so the rms value of this uh, the whole uh, all with respect to the x axis right but previously for symmetrical braking capacity it is the rms value with respect to the dc offset because dc offset is decaying component it is decaying and finally as time passes it will become zero almost zero right about the asymmetrical braking capacity it includes the ab component also right here in the as shown in the figure <coughs> another rating of the circuit breaker is your short time current rating circuit breaker may be required to carry a short circuit current for a brief duration right especially when it is clearing the fault for brief duration it needs to carry as part of the backup protection this is uh, essentially essentially in order to maintain the selectivity between the primary and backup protection because circuit breaker uh, cannot always operate as soon as the fault happens because sometime in the break uh, backup protection scheme right the circuit breakers uh, they need to carry this fault current for some time that is called short time current rating for some short time they have to carry this fault current because they need to wait for the primary relay to operate if the primary relay doesn't operate then the backup relay operates and hence the backup circuit breaker operates right okay so that is how the selectivity is maintained in order to maintain the selectivity it is very very essential this third time current rating okay we can see here through the figure right this is where we have a circuit breaker b the cbb is your primary uh, circuit breaker and cba is the backup uh, circuit breaker so your 
obviously the fault clearing time will be more for the circuit breaker A when the fault is happening in the BC section, right? At this in, the, in this section, BC section. Suppose the fault is happening here, now your CBB is the primary circuit breaker and CBA is your backup circuit breaker. So therefore, CBA needs to hold for some time. It cannot operate instantaneously. So it will wait for the circuit breaker B, right? And that we know that we know that is called the coordination time interval, right? Coordination time interval. Already we talked about this during your overcurrent relay, right? When we talked about the overcurrent relay, CTI, right? So because of this, the CBA has to carry this fault current for a short time, and this is known as short time current rating. Then the rated frequency, <laughs> the rated frequency is, is referred to as the power frequency of a circuit breaker and is generally the frequency at which it is designed to operate and commonly uh, the standard power frequencies are 50 hertz and 60 hertz, right, we know this. And operating time, the operating time of the circuit breaker is the time elapsed between the instant when the trip circuit is energized and the instant at which successfully it interrupts the current, okay, the fault current. This is the operating time, you know. So, you know, when from the fault instant to the relay operating time, after that, when the relay operates, the relay issues the uh, signal to the trip, trip coil of the circuit breaker, right? And th this is the initial point where the circuit breaker time starts, circuit breaker operating time starts. And hence, after some time, the contacts part departs, and then the time is required to quench the arcing phenomena, right? Because it restrikes and then it extinguishes. So that whole time phenomena is called the circuit breaker operation time. The time from where the trip coil of the circuit breaker energized, and the time till when it successfully interrupts the current, the fault current. That is the circuit break that is called the circuit breaker operating time. Okay, now we will see the rated operating DOT of the circuit breaker. So, here we can see the sequence of operation and the remark for it. When we are breaking the circuit, what happens? The first point it breaks and wait for 15 seconds. Okay, and then it makes again, okay, and then it breaks. This is called a circuit reclosure, circuit breaker reclosure phenomena. Then it breaks and then again it waits for three minutes. Again it makes, then again it breaks, right? This this is for circuit breakers not rated for rapid reclosing, right? And for the circuit breaker rated for rapid reclosing, we can see the sequence of operation. First it breaks then it waits for 0.3 second because it's rapidly do the reclosing. So therefore again it makes and again it breaks and it waits for 3 minutes then makes then breaks. Okay. So this is how the circuit breaker uh, sequence of operation it happens, right? This is called the reclosing, reclosure phenomena, right? Because sometimes the fault may be temporary and the fault is removed after few seconds, then the when the circuit breaker is reclosed, then it remains intact, right? So then I uh, will talk about restriking and recovery voltage. Already I told what is restriking voltage, what is recovery voltage, and we will see mathematically how it looks, the restriking voltage. Let us say consider a transmission line, and we are considering the lumped parameter L and C. Now we are neglecting the R, the impact of R. Okay, we'll finally we'll talk about R. So in order to make the analysis easier, we are considering only L and C lumped parameters, right? And the circuit breaker is connected, and a load is connected through the circuit breaker. Now if we'll see, this is kind of LC circuit, and the circuit breaker and the load, right? And the voltage is here. And this is under pre-fold condition, that is under healthy condition, this is your structure. And suppose let us say 
the fault happened we call the fault current is if right now this this fault current will uh, flow through whole circuit through l and c through l and circuit breaker and it will pass through it and obviously we have a source of vm sin omega t right now let us see what happens and as soon as this fault happens the circuit breaker contacts starts parting so when the it will start uh, the circuit breaker contacts they are separating from each other what happens the arcing phenomena takes place right this is how it is shown the arcing phenomena is happening and when the arcing phenomena will happen obviously the voltage because of the voltage restriking right so there will be certain voltage appear across the contacts of the circuit breaker so what will be the nature of this restriking voltage obviously you can see here this restriking voltage v r e s will be equal to v c right so whatever will be the nature of the v c obviously it will be equal to the nature of the v restriking restriking voltage right so the v c is nothing but the voltage across this capacitance lumped capacitance right now we can very easily derive the expression for uh, voltage across the capacitance right let us see how we can do it let us consider uh, the phenomena here the system voltage is v vm sin omega t it is we can see here this is your vm sin omega t and the current is considered lagging to the voltage by 90 degree approximately by 90 degree because when the voltage fault happens the circuit becomes inductive and hence approximately the current will lag the voltage by 90 degree and this is the instant where obviously uh, where we will consider the zero crossing point of the current right where the arc will interrupt and under that condition when the zero crossing point will see under that condition your voltage is having vm the magnitude of vm and if we will consider this vm as a step voltage because at that instant it looks like a step voltage having magnitude vm now let us consider this as a step voltage vm which is applied across a lc circuit, uh, circuit and we are now supposed to find the voltage across the c the the instantaneous voltage now i'll derive the instantaneous voltage across c already we have seen this in the basic electrical courses how a lc circuit behaves under the step voltage condition right so now your equivalent circuit will look like this we are applying a step voltage vm with magnitude vm and there is a switch and your l and c is there and as soon as the switch is closed we can find the transient voltage across the capacitance c right let us derive it so your by applying kvl obviously we'll find that vm will be equal to ldi by dt plus vc vc is your voltage across the capacitance now if i'll solve the current from this equation using the laplace transform method so is will be equal to vm by l lc square root into 1 by lc square root by s square plus 1 by lc right so this will be the equation of current in the laplace transform so you can do it taking the laplace transform so now i if i'll take 1 by lc as nothing but omega n square that is omega n is nothing but the natural frequency of the lc circuit so now what will happen to the current expression just by taking the inverse laplace transform i'll find it it will be equal to vm c by l square root sin of omega t right this is very simple now i need to find the voltage across the capacitance so i'll find vc equal to 1 by c integration of i dt so now just by integrating i'll find minus 1 by c vm c by l square root cos of omega n t by omega n plus k k is the constant of integration now i can find this constant of integration just by putting the initial values we know the initial value is vc is equal to 0 and at t equal to 
because initially it is assumed that the voltage across the capacitance is zero and the current through the inductor is also zero. So under initial condition when t equal to zero, v c equal to zero. Now substituting this, we'll find k equal to v m. We'll find k equal to v m, right? Sorry, this is k. This is your k, right? So now substituting the value of k, we'll find the the function the v c. This is equal to v c, right? So this will be equal to Vm into 1 minus cos of omega nt, and this is nothing but equal to the V restriking, right? The restriking voltage. Okay. So V restriking the voltage restriking voltage will be equal to Vm 1 minus cos of omega nt. This is your equation for restriking voltage. Obviously, this equation is not suitable when we'll consider R, because when we see this equation, this equation will remain forever like as time passes it will not not it has no decaying component when we consider the resistance parameter the parameter resistance in the circuit in the transmission line network obviously it will create the damping uh, damping uh, component right it will provide a damping component in terms of e to the power minus t by tau which in fact we call it dc offset which in fact helps us to damp out this oscillation right whatever we are seeing oscillating voltage restriking voltage it will gradually it will become zero when we consider the resistance in the network right so in order to see the nature of the restriking voltage and make the analysis easier we have neglected r but in fact the resistance plays very important role to uh, to in fact uh, damp out this restriking voltage so this is this is the nature of restriking voltage as we can see right so it will become obviously if i plot it it will look like this and the magnitude of the highest magnitude of 2 vm will get at the instant t by 2 that is capital t by 2 that is the time period of the transient voltage so the frequency of the transient voltage will be omega n which is equal to 2 pi fn right and your time period of the transient uh, waveform the re transient restriking voltage will be 1 by fn where fn is equal to 2 pi omega n right <coughs> omega n by 2 2 pi fn and okay so this is your 2 pi 1 oh, lc root square root right omega n by 2 pi in fact fn is equal to omega n by 2 pi okay so this is how we get the waveform and at t by 2 it will having the maximum magnitude 2 vm okay so we'll continue this in fact a uh, little more this restriking voltage but at least today we have seen mathematically how the restriking voltage looks like and what is the nature of the restriking voltage and next class onwards again in the uh, this uh, next class will be your last class and in the next class we will finish this circuit breaker part and we will continue ok. So thank you very much, thanks a lot for your kind attention.